So when the S24 series was announced, launched, the first device I gravitated to was the S24 Ultra. I'm an Ultra user, I'm a Note user, it's what I tend to cover first. But when I took a look at the S24 Plus, and now I've been using it for about 72 hours, I'm like, hmm, Samsung has done something pretty cool here. I'm liking it. And I wanna tell you why that is the case. Hey guys, Thunder E here, and yes, I have been using the S24 Plus for about 72 hours. Now, if you're enjoying this video, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification icon so you can watch more videos like this on the channel. Now, the reason why this has been really striking for me is the fact that I have never used the Plus for uh, a really long period of time or I never gravitated to the device. But this device has just a really nice build altogether. First of all, it's got a 6.7 inch display. Look at this display, look at this right here. This display is gorgeous. 120 Hertz uh, display, uh, it's an LTPO display. That is of course a Sukuna wallpaper. That is Sukuna in Yuji's body, of course. Now the big question for me is simply this, when is the next chapter of JJK manga coming out? Because I really need to find out what's going on. I would love to spoil it for you guys, but nope, that is not the case. I will not do that. But if you guys are looking for this wallpaper, I'll leave it for you down in the description. But seriously, I need my JJK. Anyway, back to the S24 Plus. So its size makes it feel closer to the Note, AKA the S24 Ultra for me. And that is a good thing, at least in my, um, my mind. It's a larger device, it doesn't feel heavy, but it packs in a lot of those features. So you see, have thinner bezels right now with that screen. Uh, you also have something that has an aluminum build, not the titanium, but it's still really nice. I do like the design. I maybe not like the back, the way the camera layout is, but it's still pretty good overall. Now, this house is a 4,900 milliamp battery, which means it's a massive battery here, and so you should be expecting some really good battery life off this device, which is great. Now, of course, you've got dual speaker setup as well, but the feel, it just feels so nice in your hands. Whether you're typing, there's a lot of space, a lot of great real estate there. Now, the S24 Plus is also the same. It's the same device, just smaller. And I like this design language here. Um, I do wish the camera bump was just different and more stylish, but I do like it. Now, the, the S24 is a bit small for me, but I think it will work for a lot of people. So. We know you like the design, Thunder E. What about, what makes this device gravitate to you more now? So let's start off with what I like to do, performance, right? I do a lot of gaming on devices and this is powered with the same processor as the S24 Ultra. So the S24 Plus, the S24, they all run the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, which is great, especially in the US, by the way, in the US. If you are international, you'll be getting the uh, Exynos 2400. I'm waiting to get mine, so when I do, I'll do a test against this device to see how it actually functions. But let's look at the benchmarks in comparison to the Galaxy S24 Ultra. So we'll start off by looking at our 3D Mark scores and looking at scores at Wildlife Extreme. So looking at the S24 Plus, we've got 4,892. The Ultra is at 4,960, so pretty close, not too bad. While at Solo Bay, they are super close, 8,852 on the Plus, 8,818 on the Ultra. So again, very close scores here. Now Geekbench 6, we have some interesting scores here with the S24 Plus beating uh, the Ultra in single core scores, while the Ultra is beating in multi-core scores. Now when we go over to GPU scores, uh, here there is a much larger difference here. The Plus has 15,564, while the Ultra is at 14,429. But really, honestly, what do those benchmarks mean? Well, simply put, playing the games we like to play, and of course, guys, I know you're gonna say I should play more games, and I will, but I need games that push the envelope. So let me know at least a couple more games that I can add to push the envelope. One I do want to include, of course, is... Um 2,000 years later. Huh, my brain is freezing right now. Just do it! Because it's not out yet. Warzone, that is one, when it comes out. But also, um... Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. Division Resurgent. Yes, I know. Brain freeze. But anyway, back to the games that we like to play. Call of Duty Mobile plays well. 
120 frames per second, no issues at the specs you'd expect. Then we move over to PUBG Mobile, we have 90 frames per second. That also plays really well. We're getting 90, but it kind of stuck at 88 for a while, so you have that. Then of course, we have Genshin Impact, 30 minutes of gameplay, 60 frames per second, no stress, no worries there. And finally, of course, is the new Devil May Cry game or the Devil May Cry game on, the, on uh, Android. That also ran at 60 frames per second. So solid gameplay performance, and that's nice. You know, you don't have to spend all the way to the Ultra to get the same performance there. We know that because there are a lot of devices that have the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. Now, what about the speakers? What is the audio experience here? We know the Ultra usually has the best audio, so let's take a quick listen uh, to what the Plus has to offer. Honestly, it sounded really good. I think the Ultra itself is a little bit fuller overall, but the speakers are nice. And that I think has to do with the speaker slit that we now have with both the Ultra, the Plus, all, I think, as well as also the uh, 24. They all have the same speaker slit that make it sound just maybe a little bit better overall. So that's a good thing. Now, the cameras, of course, is where most of this distinction will come to play. We know the Ultra has a 200 megapixel sensor uh, for its main sensor, while uh, the Plus it has a 50 megapixel sensor and two 10 megapixel sensors. That is the same thing on the S24 it's regular. But we're going to see how the 24 kind of stacks up and see what that camera actually brings to the table in terms of functionality. Is it good, is it bad, or is it something where you're going like, hey, I don't need to even change upgrade. Take a closer look at the three Galaxy devices, the S24 series. Now the S24 Plus in the center, I do like that color balance there, really nice. You can see a little darker on my forehead, light around my eyes. Although the S24 Ultra feels a little bit overall a nicer look, the S24 Plus feels closer. But again, all of them feel look really nice, uh, solid photos. Uh, there's a less of that hazy glare on the S24 Plus than it is on say the S24 or the Ultra itself. But again, as you can see, the image reproduction is pretty close and similar across the board. So it looks like you're going to be getting, you know, similar images, whether you're picking up the S24 Ultra or the S24 Plus or even the 24 itself. Now, looking at some other photos here, it's a portrait photo here of this Angel 24 Ultra on the right, 24 Plus looks very similar. Uh, the bokeh effect is also pretty much the same across the board. This is a really cloudy day and it shook us how well these devices do well in such conditions. Now, some indoor shots here. This is my man Victor, big shout out for him for being in the video. And you can see how much light is coming in. Both images look very similar. I would say the Ultra looks a bit sharper here than the S24 Plus, but again, similar images across the board. And here I am taking a photo with Victor again, and I think the Ultra does a better balance, but the S24 Plus photo is also similar as well in this condition with a lot of light, as you can see on the image. Now, when we go to this, just this image here, uh, which is the rear camera, and you see where the Ultra does a bit better on the contrast on the skin over the S24 Plus. But again, image, color reproduction, the bokeh, all very similar and uh, looks pretty solid. Here's an image from the rear camera 4K30. It's a bit bouncy, but it's still pretty solid. Very cloudy day. I like what the S24 Plus is doing. And I think a lot of people like it too. Yeah, the camera is pretty good. Even though it's 50 megapixels, it does a really good job. And we can see the processing work really well on this. At in better situations, I think, than it does sometimes on the S24 Ultra. So bear that in mind when you are thinking about both devices. Now, it doesn't have the extra S Pen features that, of course, the S24 Ultra does. That is something the Ultra has as a very distinct feature set. But it does have all the AI features that you would expect. So, you know, Circle to Search works with this quite easily as well. We have also a lot of those photo features as well, where there's generative AI, you can clean up images, all that kind of stuff can be done directly off this device. So you've got the AI features to boot. Now, the biggest thing about this device is that it costs $999 compared to the 
And for me, I think this really hits the mark for a lot of people who want to pick up a Galaxy device. I think this is the first time I can safely tell you that picking up the Plus is a plus in comparison to picking up the Ultra if you want to get the best of the best. I think the Ultra is still the best of the best for the Galaxy series, but I think the Plus is a nice addition for people who just don't want an S Pen and want a nice large phone that does the job and looks and feels really nice. I think a lot of those features pan out and I think this device is, man, this might just be the best Galaxy device to pick up this year. So what do you guys think? Do you think I am wrong picking the S24 Plus and saying that this might be the best, best Galaxy device to pick up? Or do you think it's the Ultra or even the regular S24 or something else? I don't know. Leave your thoughts down below. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy your entertainment. 